I'm just going to demonstrate how we can use Logger Pro to analyze a video of some motion. First thing we have to do is insert the video itself. Now we go to insert movie and I've already taken a movie of a student dropping a ball. So here it is here. Open that up. Now it'll come out in landscape mode. Um, so it'll be sideways, but that doesn't matter. We can still see how the ball is dropping. Now you can see it here. Um, there's the student. Now this is at the end of the video. So I'll just, at the start of the video, so I'll just take the slider along until you can see she's got a ball in her hand and you can see she's about to drop it now. And there it goes all the way down. So we'll start our analysis about there somewhere. Now, to analyze the, uh, the video, you need to select these tools over here. So this little three dots, click that. You'll see there's some menu items up the side. Now, the first thing we have to do is set the scale. So you've got this little icon here, which is to set the scale. And Basically what you do is, and I've put a ruler in the video, so you can see there's a one metre ruler there, so I start the cursor at the start of the ruler, drag it down to the end of it, that's a metre, and it comes up here, so that distance is one metre, as you can see there, so that's okay. Now the next thing to do is to mark the points of the ball, so you go up to this one here, which is to mark the points, and you can see the menu item, it's got a little um, thing that says add point. So we'll do that. Now, the first point has to be when she drops the ball. So I can do this. I can go along frame by frame until we see her dropping the ball. Now, there it is there. So I want to go back a bit. And about there, my fingers are just starting to move. So what I do is put that in the center of the ball, click. Now what Logger Pro does is advance the screen or advance the movie by one frame. Now that's not enough, we can hardly see that. So I'll click down here and get it going a few frames and I'll put that in there. Now you can see it going. So I just keep doing that until I've got enough data. Now <clears throat> you can go all the way to the bottom if you like. And you'll notice the dots are getting further and further apart because the ball's accelerating. Now it's starting to get a bit blurry because of the uh, speed of the ball compared to the film. But we've probably got enough data. We'll just go a little bit further. And that's giving us heaps of data. You can see it'll probably hit the floor. There, it's hit the floor. So I've got enough there. So that's the end of the marking all the points. Now, if you look at the scale over on the side here, the video analysis data table, I'll just go back a bit. Now you can see it starts at two seconds. So it was two seconds into the video before she dropped the ball. And according to this, it was at a distance of 0.8 of a metre. So that's the starting distance. Now, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So what I'll do is take it across to Excel and we'll analyse it. So I'll highlight all of that and copy that and open up Excel and I'll paste that into Excel. So there it is there. So we've got the time in the first column and the displacement in the Y, it's in the Y axis really, Y direction really. Now if I plot that, it'll start at two seconds and 0.8 of a meter. Now that's not very convenient. So let's Let's make up a new T and a new S by subtracting those values. So we start at zero. So instead of being 2.035 seconds, I'll say take that and subtract 2.035 off that and it should come to zero, which it does. Now if I fill down, you'll notice the times are all, time intervals are the same, except that uh, it start, now starts at zero, and I can do that for the second one. So I'll let that equal 
starting value minus 0 0.8 1085 and that should be pretty close to zero. I'll go down and fill down. Now if I plot these two, this should be pretty exciting. Now this should be uh, y is proportional to x squared uh, because time is, uh, according to the formula, the object is accelerating. So when I plot this, let's insert graph like this. And look at that, that's a beautiful y is proportional to x squared graph. Now I think we'll get rid of the first two data points because they're a bit dodgy and we're left with that. Now we can get Excel to add a trend line, but it's not going to be a linear trend line, it's going to be a power trend line because we think it'll be y is proportional to x squared. So I've added a power trend line and that fits nicely through that. So let's have a look at the equation on the chart. Now, if it's y is proportion, if it's y equals x to the power of two, it means it's y is proportional to x squared. So look for the exponent when I push display equation, and I'll get an r squared value. Now you'll notice it's y is equal to 4.266 times x to the 2.3. So it's a little bit more than x squared. Now, that's because of the quality of the data and uh, there'll be friction, air resistance and so on. You don't know what's happening there. Okay, so let's try and linearize that. Now, we can linearize that by um, just doing this. We want it, it's y is proportional to x squared, so let's get an x squared uh, line at the bottom. So this will be t squared. So I'll just this to the square okay so I've, I've squared all the t values go down now I'll put these s values in there as well it's just easier for um, Excel to plot these if I just put it after the t column now I can't paste ordinary because it's a formula so I'll paste values. There they are now. Okay, now if I plot these two, this should give me a pretty straight line. So insert and look at that. That's pretty straight. So we'll have a look. Now this time I can insert a linear trend line because it's pretty linear. Let's have a look at more options. Now I will set the intercept to zero even though we didn't uh, really get a zero point in the data, um, we'll display the equation and the R squared. Okay. Now the R squared is pretty good, 0.99. The Y value for the gradient of that is 4.0. Now this is, the gradient is S divided by T squared. Now if you think of your kinematics formulas, that's equal to a half A because s equals ut plus a half at squared. So s on t squared is equal to a half a. So if the gradient is a half a, a must be twice the gradient. And you'll see here, that'll be two times 4.02, which will be about 8.04. So the value we're getting for acceleration due to gravity is about eight. Now that's an error of about 1.8 meters per second squared because the accepted value is 9.8 and you could work out the uh, percent error as well. It's probably about 10% error. So that's how you do the analysis of video data.